there's a very widespread belief that artists all lead turbulent lives, full of drama and passion, their genius going unrecognised until after their death. Maybe something like Hollywood's version of the life of Vincent van Gogh, in which Kirk Douglas plays the tortured Vincent, or even Ed Harris playing a brooding and doomed Jackson Pollock. But really, nothing could be further from the truth when we look at Frederick McCubbin. By all accounts, he was a kindly and genial man. He was a devoted husband and a father of seven children. And in Melbourne, during his lifetime, he enjoyed great prestige and the admiration of his peers. McCubbin was born in a working class family in Melbourne. His father was a baker, and as a boy, he did the rounds for his father in the bakery cart. But he always had a passion for drawing, and in 1869, he enrolled in evening classes, transferring in 1872 to the newly established National Gallery School. There he met fellow student Tom Roberts, and they were to become lifelong friends, and Roberts was a great influence upon the young McCubbin. In 1886, after Roberts returned from England, where he'd been studying, the two, together with Lewis Abraham, set up an artist camp at Box Hill, painting outdoors, and this is where McCubbin completed his masterpiece Lost, now in the National Gallery of Victoria collection. In 1886, McCubbin was also appointed drawing master at the National Gallery School, and this appointment was to change the course of his life, for it gave him an assured income. This was extremely unusual in Australia at the time, and it really set McCubbin upon a very different course to that of his contemporaries, who all went overseas to further their studies and their careers. It, this job allowed McCubbin to stay in Australia and it also allowed him to marry and in 1889 he married Annie and they had a very long and happy marriage with seven children. Throughout the 1890s McCubbin painted those large scale pioneering paintings for which he is now best known. Down on his luck, a bush burial, paintings which are now iconic images of Australian life. In 1901 he purchased a property on Mount Macedon which he named Fontainebleau in honour of the Barbizon School of Artists. There he painted the iconic Pioneer, a painting which today is recognised as one of the greatest of all Australian works. Interestingly, the money that McCubbin made from the sale of that painting allowed him to travel overseas for the very first time in 1906. He went overseas for a period of six months and in his letters home he recorded his excitement at seeing the works of art that he'd so long admired in reproduction back in Australia. Of course, his letters also record how much he missed his home and his wife. On his return from Europe in 1907, McCubbin's style changed somewhat. He even painted in a more impressionistic manner, but I think it's in his subjects that we see the change particularly. He concentrated more on portraits of his family and of landscapes just from his homes. And he believed that it is precisely those things which are familiar to us, homely subjects, in which we rise to true greatness. McCubbin continued to be productive right until the end of his life in 1917. His reputation as a great Australian artist has never waned and today his images are hung in all Australian galleries. <laughs>